Well, welcome to the old Classic Car Channel. Now, uh, regulars will know that a few weeks ago when we went to a Classic Car show, the little Standard 8 there actually packed up. It broke down on the way there, which was a bit of a bit of a disappointment, really. So, uh, um, in the comments underneath that particular video, because um, we were on the way to the Audlum Festival of Transport, on a couple of the comments people have asked, did I actually have a look at the fuel pump, which uh, was actually the problem that caused us to break down? How, did I actually have a look at the pump that I took off? just to see if uh, there was anything obviously wrong with it. So uh, it was a modern repro pump. It didn't look very old at all. So I was really surprised that that was actually the problem um, that caused us to uh, fail to proceed. And in the end, I rebuilt an old one of the AC type fuel pumps, the petrol pumps. I made one up out of two, fitted that and touch wood. It's, it seems to work. So uh, I thought it might be quite interesting, uh, prompted by the comments on the earlier video, just to have a quick look inside this sort of modernish repro pump and just see if it's obvious why the thing stopped working. Right, so this is the uh, faulty fuel pump. Um, like I say, originally it had one of these AC pumps, which is this kind of thing. And this is what's back on the standard eight now. They're similar, but they're not the same at all. I hope you can see that. So I'm not gonna spend too long on this particular pump because it's not going back on the car and I'm not gonna refurbish it because if I'm gonna refurbish a pump, it may as well be one of these original AC pumps of which there are a few dotted around here. So uh, if we whiz that off, that's the original uh, fuel inlet union. So we'll keep that, we'll keep any of the fittings, but the pump itself won't be staying. So under here is usually a little filter, hopefully. We can just about see that if I move my hand out of the way. There it is. Let's lift out, usually. Not on these repro ones. There we go. Right. So that's clearly, <coughs> that's not seen much use at all, really. There's nothing obvious in there. There's a little valve in there. But really, I just want to see. The main thing to check is this diaphragm in here, just to see if that's packed up. You wouldn't expect it to pack up so quickly. I mean, some people may think, it's ethanol in the fuel and there definitely could be something in the fuel that's caused the uh, maybe caused the diaphragm to pack up who knows I'm going to reserve judgment though because certainly there are lots of strange things in modern fuels which weren't there in the 1950s um, but curiously ethanol or alcohol in petrol isn't a completely new invention. Back in the 1930s you had Cleveland Discol. Uh, that was a brand of petrol here in the UK and possibly elsewhere. Well, I'm sure there are equivalents in other countries. And that had alcohol in it. I'm not sure to what percentage, but I'm sure it would have been at least 10-15% just, you know, just to make it worth all the effort. So it'd be interesting to know if anyone knows more about the blend of petrol that Cleveland Discol used, then it'd be quite interesting to know really because uh, there's so much hoo-ha about ethanol in petrol and I'm sure there's something to all the claims that you read about with rubber components breaking up and soldered components being uh, eaten into and so on. Well I think a lot of the problem is probably with fuel being left for a long time in cars that don't get used a great deal, especially over the winter. So I'm sure there is an element of truth to it, but I'd be interested to know because, like I say, alcohol, ethanol in fuel is not a new invention. Well, that's all the screws out, so can we, can we separate this at all? Will it even come apart? I'm beginning to wonder, actually. Let's just take this top off again. Yeah, I can't see anything obvious in there, any obvious reason. Note to the nice wooden handle screwdriver today. No particular maker on this one that I can see. But yeah, it's just a nice old thing. Anyway, I'll go and find a flat bladed screwdriver and just give it a gentle prize because, uh, like I said, I'm not too worried about preserving this or saving it because I'm not going to use it again. But as you can see, obviously the top's off now, but this was the giveaway. There was just no pumping action there at all when it was all back together and straight off the car. There was just nothing happening at all, which makes me think that something inside here has probably packed up. Right, one modern screwdriver, flat bladed. Let's just see if we can coax this off and have a quick peek inside. There we go. 
Right. Okay. Certainly keen enough to pop up on the spring. So there's there's the internals. The diaphragm. At first glance anyway. Doesn't look too bad at all. So the answer to the question why has this fuel pump packed up is still unclear. So what we'll have to do is try and peel this off here a bit. And usually what you do is this is like a bayonet, so you push it in against the spring, twist it, and then it all in theory comes out, at least that's how it works on the, the old original pumps. So that just of course that of course uh, twists in mounts the other way doesn't it of course silly billy that goes in like that so that just pinged out so this when I took the lid off and that was under there like that this piece should have stayed in the base because this sort of peg if you like here that slots into a slot and then twists like that to locate so this makes me think that what's happened is this has worked its way around and the operating arm that this slots into was just passing past this and not operating the spring and the diaphragm at all. Because this, that should have stayed in there when I took the top off. That should not have come out just like that with the top piece. That's what confused me momentarily and I'm easily confused. So, so let's just see because that pushes, if you, uh, if you see that, that pushes against a spring and that little peg bit can see there hopefully this little peg bit that peg in there slots inside here so if we push this back in and twist it it should stay that's assuming that the thing that you're pressing this peg into is still okay and it appears that it isn't. If I take this out of the vise, you can see inside, hopefully, you can see that slot there, which attaches to the operating arm there. So that slot there, the end of this, goes through that hole, through the slotted hole. Then you twist this, and that's what locks it in place. But it would appear that this doesn't seem too keen on going in there and staying in there even when you twist it so I'm going to have a quick play with that and just see if I can get this to properly locate into there right well that's all back together now so does it work does this fuel pump hopefully work now let's have a listen so we'll just put that up to the microphone and see hopefully the microphone's picking that up but that is the sound of what is hopefully a working fuel pump. And certainly if you block, it certainly seems to work. And it's making all the right noises, which is quite encouraging. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. Now why that now works when it didn't before is open to some debate. How that could have twisted in so much that the diaphragm was no longer operating and no longer engaging with the operating lever is anyone's guess. Now I can only think perhaps it had been incorrectly assembled. Um, maybe it had just been the diaphragm had just been popped in and the lid the top of the pump screwed on um, but it hadn't been twisted through 90 so maybe it was just caught on enough for it to work for a little while and then 
it just pinged free inside because it wasn't the peg under the diaphragm wasn't fully located within the operating arm. That's the only thing I can think that's probably happened that it was put together incorrectly at some point. Now whether someone's had this apart previously is always a possibility. I can't really tell, um, but it seems unlikely because it's such such a new looking pump. Um, so I can only think that it was probably put together wrong from the beginning, but it just happened to work for a while. Um, let's also try the here's the priming the priming lever. So if we give that a go, we we'll just pop that up to the microphone. Hopefully you can hear that. It's a little bit breezy out here now. But yeah, that seems to work now. That's never, in all the time I've owned a car, which I right, admit isn't very long, but um, that's never worked before. But now that I've put it back together and twisted it through 90 and then fitted the top piece back on, um, it seems to work. So that's a little bit strange, but that will now be a spare. and I'll put that in the back of the standard there and that can just be with us just in case we need it while we're out on the road. I'm not fully convinced about it but on the face of it it seems to work so I'm guessing that's probably a result. Anyway I just thought I'd do that quick update just so because I know one or two people did wonder what was actually wrong with this particular pump and hopefully that's partially answered the question but why it presumably was uh, incorrectly assembled to begin with is anyone's guess. Anyway, as it's a nice day, um, it seems like a good opportunity just to catch up with a few recent finds that we've made. Um, car boot sale finds um, over the last few weeks. I did a video uh, a month or two back describing some of the really interesting things we found a little while back. So let's update things and just see what's new here at OCC HQ in terms of car memorabilia. Things that have been saved from a very uncertain future. Well, the first two finds, I actually, um, it was Mrs. OCC found these, and me and my uh, my youthful assistant were down at Lodeson Park, so her indoors went to the uh, one of the car boot sales, and she found, amongst other things, this, a battery terminal and cable cleaning brush. Now, these are really useful. Not only do they look good on the shelf, these are actually quite useful for cleaning your battery terminals. And this is produced by Snap-on Tools Limited, or Corporation, rather, of Wins Wisconsin there we go so the new two-way cleaning tool for battery terminals so you can clean the terminals themselves and also the inside of the cables where they connect on so that's that's actually quite a neat thing and it's really neat because it's still in its original box how cool is that so fortunately there's the old snap-on logo very famous still very much around that name so if we have a peek inside here it is and it's like a plastic or yeah, it is plastic not bakelite but it says plastic so what date is this probably what 1960s something like that but what a great find that is and there you go so you can see in there hopefully there we go you can see that pushes on so you push that over the battery terminal so they're a bit furred up you push that on twist it like that and it cleans them up what a great useful thing that is a snap on battery terminal and cable cleaning brush so that was a good find that's a recent car boot sale and that'll be preserved now here at OCC HQ and on the same stall great excitement this was found a YPAC battery supercharger what a magnificent thing that is still in its original box so this is a battery charger I'm guessing again Sort of late 50s something like that late 50s early 1960s probably looking at the uh, the typeface there the font if you like it can be hung from a wall or st stood on the bench right so let's have a look inside at this magnificent battery charger from YPAC that's a name that I usually associate more with fog lamps and spot lamps but clearly they did other car accessories as well sadly that's a bit loose and there we go. Let's whiz this out of here. Cool, look at that. I've not actually had this out of the box yet. But it's there with all the cables. Apparently it still works, so it'll be quite interesting to test this. Although I don't think I'd trust it to be left on its own devices. Maybe use it um, while I'm around. But I wouldn't certainly leave it overnight charging a battery here in the garage just in case things went wrong. But yeah, 12 volt or 6 volt. So that's always handy. The battery supercharger is 3 to 4 amp, made by YPAC. Then you just move that across depending on whether you want 12 volt or 6 volt. No switches here. But that is superb. It's got the original 
cables there if we can just get those off there so these obviously plug into the front it's all color coded so you can't go too far on unless you're colorblind of course it's a bit awkward to do this single-handedly but yeah that just pops in there the red one goes in there of course and there you go what a cool looking thing that is it's in great condition so i guess it's been used but it's always been kept in its original box so it's probably not been used a great deal it's just been stored away and that probably explains why i mean this is all steel there's barely any rust on it at all and you can see there's the wall hanging so i may even hang that up on the wall somewhere just to get it off the uh, off the workbench but yeah what a cool looking thing that is and the hats off to mrs occ for recognizing a gem when she saw it we had an emergency phone call while we were on the way to Loughton Park, excitedly telling me that this had been spotted and should she buy it? And of course the answer was yes. Now I always find boxes very interesting, so when I saw this one, I thought I'll have to go and grab that. Now, it's a very simple, very plain wooden box, or at least it was when I got it. The catch was on there. But there's nothing there's nothing fancy or particularly quality about it. interestingly it's all screwed together the whole thing is held together with these little screws as you can see there along the edge there and along the bottom but i just thought that was a really handy sized box now when we got it it was looking a bit tatty already had that on it which was quite nice but this handle wasn't there nor was this little uh, little badge here so it was just a plain box with this name thing on it there was a piece of metal a rough piece of metal across here which made it into a handle and i thought that'll make a really good little lightweight toolbox to carry in the car so a couple of weeks later at the car boot sale i found someone selling a pair of these old handles so i thought i know where that handle will come in useful so we put that on there and i found some suitable little screws slotted of course no cross heads so i found those fitted the handle on there so that makes it quite a practical little box now now this badge on here i just had this hanging up i've no idea what it's for it could be for a kettle or whatever made in england by the general electric company limited of england the electric senior safety model supplied by gamages no less so what would that have been off? Would that have been off a kettle or something like that? I really don't know, but it was only hanging up in the garage and I wanted a little badge of some description to put on this box just to sort of look the part, really. So I thought, what better place to put this than on this new little toolbox that I've been putting together? I mean, the box itself was £2. The handles were 50 pence for two. This I already had hanging up in the garage. Like I said, I'm not quite sure what that's from. Um, and I found... A couple of really nice little screws, copper plated slotted screws, and I thought they will just look perfect. They look like that looks like it's been there since the beginning of time. But if you know what that is, the electric senior safety model, please let me know in the comments because it'd be interesting to know. But I just thought, well, it's just a bit of fun. It just looks nice as a lightweight toolbox to carry in the car rather than having the tools rattling around everywhere. So I'll probably use this in the standard even, put that fuel pump that we were looking at before, pop the fuel pump in there in the bag, and that can go in with a little spare supply that we'll take with us whenever we go out in it. So that's just, that's just a bit of fun. Now the final thing I just thought I'd talk about quickly is something that someone was kind enough to send to me. A gentleman called Tony got in touch, and he noticed that I'm quite fond of the old spanners, which I don't know where he got that idea from. As you can see in this box here, many, many old spanners. Are these Terry's or something like that? You know, we do like a nice old spanner. Some very long feeler gauges there. Very, very long indeed. Many, many feeler gauges there. It's made in the USA. KD Tools, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Made in the USA. Yeah, so anyway, it was spotted that I like old tools. So this gentleman kindly sent me and these arrived only yesterday loads of old taps and dies that he no longer had any use for so that was very kind of him so thanks very much for that there are all sorts in here if I can just move the camera down smoothly professionally have a quick look and see all these taps and dies in here so they're always handy to have around 
There's some in here. Quite a nice old box as well. First aid dressing. I wonder if there's any date on that. It's probably sort of 1950s, 1960s. Something like that. Yeah, loads of really useful taps, dyes and so on. There we go, bit of that. So, anyway, thanks very much for sending that over. I'll integrate these in with some of the other tools in the garage around the corner there. But yeah, that was really, that was a real treat to receive that the other day. Always good to rescue these things because so much of it just gets chucked away when people die or move into smaller homes. You know, stuff that was useful once and no longer useful. Um, it may get advertised and sold, but a lot of it just ends up in landfill, which is a real, real shame. Anyway, I just thought I'd have a quick talk about some of these recent gems. Um, and hopefully there'll be plenty more to come, as you can see. I'm not short of old tools and things. I'm particularly fond of this kind of thing. This one turned up at an antique centre a little while ago, but I hadn't realised that it got the military crow's foot on it. So that was a nice little find. Anyway, that was just a, a quick garage update, quick update on the standard 8 fuel pump, a few recent finds that we found at car boot sales in the last few weeks, and that's where we're up to with that side of things. So what else is new here at OCCHQ? The standard 8 is behaving itself, it's taken us to several shows recently. Anglia hasn't been out very much recently, but I do plan to take that out before too long. Now the little van is back inside now because I thought I don't want it under the, the lean-to that's over there um, during the winter, so I thought it needs to be inside. And as uh, we made a bit of space lately, it can come in, so that's tucked away there. And we've been doing a little bit more with the 32 Morris, basically just starting to clean up all the front end. Um, it's not going to be restored, but I'd like to get it so it's on the button and running again. Uh, the, the, probably the very first video that ever came on the channel many, many years ago is a short clip of this actually running. So I know that technically it will run. There's a few little jobs I want to do before I try firing it up again, but I checked for a spark, that seems okay. And uh, when I checked the old video, I just had it running on a gravity fuel pump, a uh, feed rather, straight in to the SU carburetor that's over there. So. I'll do that in the first instance. Yeah, I've just been cleaning up the front end a little bit. Just so it's presentable, not restored. But just so it looks appropriate to the rest of the car really, and not dirty to work on. That's really where we're up to with that, nothing much to report on Little Dodge. So yeah, this is the one that I've been sort of fiddling with of late, but there's not really been any huge progress, so it's not been worthy of its own video, but I just thought I'd post a quick update on here. Like I say, the little van's over here now. The Anglia is tucked away alongside it. Thank you very much for watching and there will be more videos along very very soon, so bye for now.